Hi guys and welcome back. It is the time of the month once more and no, we're not talking about the period, we're talking about our monthly reading wrap up. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I have read, yes, seven books in September and now I want to introduce them to you. So I started off the month with like a contemporary fiction kind of novel called Exciting Times. I actually have it, um, I'm gonna get up and get it. I, okay, I have it right here, Exciting Times by, you know what, I'm, I'm not gonna say the name out loud because I do not know how to pronounce that first name. Honestly, Irish names, they fuck most of the world over because I have no idea how to pronounce that. Anyways, so this is the first book I read this month. Um, this is uh, somewhat a coming of age story. It is about our main character, Ava, who after she finishes her bachelor in Dublin or like in Ireland at least, she moves to Hong Kong to become an English teacher. Not because that's what, what she studied or that's what she wants to do, but she, she basically just wants to get away from Ireland, away from her family, away from her life back there. Um, which of course does not really work out because if you're unhappy in a place, it, I can say this with almost certainty, it does not have to do with the place, but it has to do with you. So she goes to Hong Kong, but it's not like suddenly she's super happy or anything, but like her problems only go on kind of. But this is not really, it is touched upon in this novel. But what this book is mainly about is like two relationships Ava embarks on in Hong Kong. The first is to Julian, a banker. Though oh, it is so hard to describe their relationship because no, they always keep saying that like the last thing they would call each other is like girlfriend, boyfriend, but then they like live together and she becomes like really obsessed with the relationship because she tries to fill like her inner void with this relationship, which is of course very unhealthy and toxic. Um, and then there comes a point where Julian moves away for like a couple of months and um, Ava starts a new relationship, but like that relationship as well. Um, she kind of she kind of makes these relationships like her everything, which is like again this clear sign of her trying to fill a void in her life that she's not addressing otherwise. Once she starts this relationship with the second person, of course she has to think about okay, how is now her relationship with Julian changing and all of that. Um, to be really honest, I would have enjoyed this book way more had it, had it not been about relationships she's making in Hong Kong, basically. Had, like, had this book been about, okay, like this young 22-year-old woman who after she finishes her uni program moves to like this foreign country in new city, that is so exciting. If it had been about that, like her trying to establish like a life in this foreign place, her being on her own, her trying to like face these demons that she carries inside of her um i would have enjoyed this book way more but it like was honestly just about her life within those relationships or like i want to say at least like 90 percent was just about like yeah her life within those relationships but not about her kind of as a person or like her her life outside of these relationships because she doesn't have a life outside of these relationships as i said because she makes them her everything, letting her entire life revolve around these relationships. So um, that's that's not really like a critique about this book though, because that's like saying, that's like ordering Mexican food and saying, okay, I would have loved it if this were Indian food, then I would have loved it, you know? So I, I guess I just personally prefer like coming of age books that are like, just like protagonist focused instead of, protagonist in their relationship focus because that kind of gives the idea or, or at least I think it conveys the idea that like most personal growth can like only happen within like romantic relationship with others and I do not agree with that at all. I'm not claiming that that is what this book is trying to say but because this is not about her as a person kind of like at all but only like it's only about her in these relationships and only like at the very 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 end we kind of see like a tiny little bit of like de personal development within her but other than that it's just like about her kind of like really toxic relationships within these relationships not necessarily be because like these other people that she's like dating are toxic but because she makes the relationships toxic by letting them 
take over her entire life you know what i'm saying um so yeah, I just, I went into this thinking, oh my god, it's like about this young girl who like suddenly moves to Hong Kong, how exciting, and it's called Exciting Times. So I guess I went into this just expecting something else, and I would have enjoyed, as I just said, a book, like with a different, if this book would have had a different focus, just like on her and her trying to establish like a, a new life, like in Hong Kong suddenly, I would have enjoyed it a lot more than this being just like this character study in relationships but it was it was a it was fun kind of to read it really reminded me of Sally Rooney's writing is that because it's also Irish I don't know I don't know moving on the second book I read this month I have already talked about in my what was it July reading wrap up because I read The Maidens by um, Alex Michaelides again and I actually have it Wait, I have the first copy is right there, the second copy is right there, because the second time I read it, I read it in Spanish. So obviously it was the same book, but another language, and I really enjoyed the book, so I wanted to read it again, and I also wanted to read it again in Spanish. Plus, I really, really love this cover. It's like the cover art of like all the covers of the different languages I really enjoy, but I especially like the Spanish cover, so I kind of had to get it and read it again. Um, but yeah. I mean, check that other video, but it's about like this dark academia, murder, mystery, thriller, like with a serial killer or like is it a serial killer on the loose at Cambridge University. And I really, I really, really enjoyed that book. The only thing I don't like about it is kind of like the solution. I would have wanted like kind of like an old fashioned, I like old fashioned solutions to my murder mysteries. And that's just like having like simple motifs, such as like he did it. He or she did it for the money. He he did it out of greed or out of out of affairs of the heart or something like that. But um, when when books like murder mysteries take a more like psychotic route in terms of reasoning behind everything, that's where it gets like yeah. And especially this one has like a really messed up solution. If you know the solution of the book you get, you completely get what I'm saying. You cannot be like, oh yeah, I love the solution of the book. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, but I can't talk about it without spoiling it. So I'm going to stop it right here. Now, the third book I read this month, I have a separate reading vlog too, and that is The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis, I want to say. I think that's his name. I have the separate reading vlog for, it that, for that. So I'm just, if you want to hear more about the book, check out that video. But yeah, that's the literary basis of the... Um, of the series the queen's gambit of course so it's about this child prodigy growing up called beth Harmon, and like how she becomes one of the best if not the best chess player of her time but it's also about like the about her growing up becoming a woman making having and making relationships with other people and like figuring a whole lot of stuff out but mainly of course it's about chess the next two books i read were actually I I struggle with calling the books actually because both of them were so short. You could I could read each of them within like a day. The first of them was The Adventures of the Black Hand. That's actually a it's a children's book for sure. And it's kind of like a I don't know, I don't know the term for these kind of books, but like mm, detective novels where you yourself are kind of like investigating too. It has like all these wait, I'm gonna get it. So as you can tell, I read this one again in Spanish. And it has like these illustrations on every other page. On the page before, it always tells you to like look for a certain hint that it's like about right now. It's like about these five or like four friends, um, like playing detectives basically, but they're actually solving some stuff. It's not about murder, of course, but it's about like thefts and stuff like that. And like you have all these pictures and you're always looking for the clues. I read this before in um, my native language, but like years back, that was my dad's copy actually. And I saw this in like a library, like they were selling this outside of the library. It was like a Spanish library. And they had like this stack of books out on front. And they said like, each book is like one euro, you can pick it up and otherwise they would like get rid of it. And I saw this and of course I had to get it. So that was like a super cute tag along kind of detective story they actually like four different stories in this one but it's super short and like every other page is like drawing so you get through this within a day that's for sure the other really short book i read this month was nancy Drew, the password to larkspur lane that's what it's called um i read that for my 
uh, Nancy Drew slash Fear Street video that I'm also gonna look up above and down below. Um, so this is just about, again, you can, you can read any Nancy Drew novel realistically within like a day or two days. It's like, they're really short, they're written for children, you get through them quite quickly. It was like a light-hearted mystery about um, like old ladies disappearing and pigeons dropping clues and like of course because of that larkspur element flowers play quite a big role in this one as well it was really cute i enjoyed it now the second to last book i managed to pick up last month was this the mysterious society of lady scoundrels i picked this up after desi talked about this in one of her videos i'm gonna link her up above and down below um so picture bridgerton if you've watched it not the plot of Bridgerton, but the setting, because we are talking Victorian England, ladies in extravagant gowns, jewelries, refined society. But in this book, these refined ladies, they are pirates. They are scoundrels, they are thieves and like pirates. It's called pirates all the time because there's like one kind of like supernatural element to this book. And that is that houses can fly. So you know how like in our world pirates have like their ships but in this world like these ladies who are pirates they can like fly and like move around with their houses but like other than that there's no supernatural elements further well i was quite surprised when i read that because i didn't know that this book would have any supernatural elements at all so i was like wait what houses are doing what but bear with me so this is about cecilia a young girl who grew up with her aunt after her um, mother got killed by her father because her father is like this super villain of, of the time, right? Um, and then this assassin is being sent after her, but the assassin is like this very cute, very charming young man. And he claims to be on her side, like he wants to protect her because he's also working for the queen. But then he's obviously also working for her father and like for some other people. And he's actually supposed to kill her, but he's, he ends up like protecting her. And then her aunt gets um, ends up being kidnapped, so she tries to save her aunt from her father, and all of that is going on. It's like this adventure story in like this Bridgerton-like setting. And it was like a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the the banter between the two protagonists, like between her and like this young scoundrel, this young pirate. Um, plus, what I also did not expect heading into this book, there were some. Uh, steamy scenes in this one let me tell you <laughs> and yeah that was uh that was that was quite good actually and i did not expect to heading into this book i mean look at the cover would you expect some steamy sex scenes in that no right <laughs> so um that came as a surprise but i mean i wasn't mad about it i'm not mad about it at all so that was actually really really fun to read <laughs> And now, last but not least, I picked up a classic this month. That was actually the third book I picked up this month. But then, like, throughout the other weeks of the month, I also, like, ended up reading other books while I was simultaneously reading this one. Plus, this is, like, a, a classic. It is dense, so I'm only pro progressing at, like, a, a slower pace. This is Wilkie Collins' Armadale. It is, like, it is a sensation novel from the Victorian age. It is about... Um, confused identities, family curses, intrigues, and all of that. I am not yet, I'm like barely halfway through, as you can tell. Uh, but like, this counts them as more than one book, actually, even though I'm not even through with it yet, because this book in itself is like segmented into different books. And I just this morning finished off um, book four. Oh, like, I, I'm sorry, I finished off book three. So now I'm like here. Um, at the beginning of book four so i will be reading this or like i will continue to read this over like the not the next month so that was that i feel like that was somehow like a kind of funny mixture of books or maybe not i don't know i'm really looking forward to october though i already started like like i'm still reading this of course but i also already started the next book I'm not gonna say which one though. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to October's reads. My TBR is stacked as it has never been stacked before. I have so many good books on like uh, in like my shelf. So I'm really excited about picking them all up. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this and I will see you for the next video. Bye.